So we're recording and let me give him boss command. Sudo. You are good to go, Josh. Alrighty. Sorry for that. I just realized this morning that everything was buggered up and it's my bad because I'm re reorganizing the class as we're teaching the class so that sometimes it catches up to you and bites you in the buttocks. Let me make sure the, uh, I think the homework one looks fine. Okay. Share button, must share. Okay. All right, is everyone able to see my screen share and hear me? All right, cool. <clears throat> well, today is going to be another one of those <clears throat> going through a uh, existing Python package labs. So we're going to look at the functionality for Pandas like we did with NumPy and see a couple things we can do with it. I don't believe there's an overarching uh, problem we're wanting to solve. We're just taking a look at it. So let's get into that. Okay, so just like we had NumPy for scientific computing, we have Pandas. It is uh, data manipulation and analysis. Uh, it's going to allow us to um, do some, uh, as it says, analysis. What kind of analysis are we going to want to get into? But just realize that we haven't talked about that yet uh, in the course. So that'll be something we also talk about. Just like we had before, we've got a nice sheet of, I call it a cheat sheet, um, that gives you kind of at a glance look at what you can do with uh, Pandas. Um, again, this is not some list of stuff I would expect anyone to memorize. Uh, it is, however, uh, you kind of need to know that these things exist, even if you don't remember exactly what they're called, just so that you can go look it up. That's, that's my best advice. Okay. Um, let's see. I think this image was also not uh, working last time I did this, so it's no big deal. What uh, what do we use pandas for? Well. What we have from Pandas is a data frame. And putting our data into a data frame allows us to um, do the analysis and manipulation that we like to. Just like we had the, uh, what was it called? Um, instead of a list, we had an array, NumPy array. Just like we had a NumPy array from uh, NumPy, we're going to be using the data frame from Pandas. So get used to having both of those. First thing we got to do important. I've actually um, just ran everything, so I'm going to clear all outputs. Okay, so let's look at how we would do what we, just like we had in NumPy, we're going to manually build what we will want to do with Pandas, and then I'll show you how easy it is for the Pandas data frame to handle it. So what are we going to do here? We're going to construct three lists. One for row names, one for column names, and one for the content. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to fill everything up with some random numbers. And then what are we going to do? We're just going to make everything blank. So instead of having uh, a zero, as we had in previous examples, we just have an uh, empty character. All right, let's build it. What does it look like? I don't know. Let's see. I suppose I should uh, I should put that on a different thing. Although it doesn't particularly matter. There. All right. So as you can see, we have the uh, table. Well, it is a two-dimensional list, really. A list with lists inside. And uh, 
each one is filled up with an empty character. We uh, used zeros before to do this. All right. Now, how? Um, what are we going to fill it in with? Well, we want the row name and the column name to be in there. So we're going to go for the 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 first one. Put the row name in there. And then for the first column, we're going to put the column name in there. And then we're going to fill the table in from this my tabular thing we made up of random numbers. OK, let's do that. I can print it again. Looks fine. We can print it in a nicer format so that it looks more like a data frame. If you think back to the treasure maps, this is kind of what um, they looked like in your text file. Um, we can also look at it by row. We can look at it by column if we like. Or we can index around and get like a particular row and column. We could even get like a two by two chunk of this if we want. But yeah, now all that stuff we just did, it took it, it was, it was simple, but it did take a couple lines of code in order to make it happen. Well, let's make all that happen with, with, uh, with pandas. All right. So I'm going to make a data frame called DF. We do, uh, that's pretty standard. We use it a lot. But what are we going to put into it? Well, here's the content. Well, actually, here's the content. Here's the row names, and here's the column names. OK, let's check it out. Hey, that's nicer. Steven's got some nice um, highlighting for us. Well, we uh, have what we did before, looking through it, printing it, going by row. Let's do similar stuff with uh, our function. Uh, let's get the dimensions. I got to run this one too. Got four by four. I'm sorry, five by four. Uh, and this one, so DF1, what are we doing here? Well, we're putting the table we made into another data frame. So we have, why would you want to do this? Well. It's kind of hard to say the wth column, the wth column, the cth row. So if we want to have row 0, 1, 2, and 3, we can do that. But it's easy to undo. As you can see, df was the original, df1 is the extra added, and df2 is getting rid of essentially undoing. And we have the dimensions we expect. We can add new columns to our data frame if we want. Do that like this. It's really simple. Um, I would like to add a new column. And what are we going to call it? Well, we're going to fill it with in A. I could fill it up with whatever I want, really. Um, let's try doing just that. Now, the other day when I mentioned that messing around in uh, NumPy by rows and columns, I was confusing it with pandas. Um, adding new columns is easy. Getting rid of columns is easy. But adding new rows is trickier. That's because, if I remember correctly, these columns are stored as something called a series. And it's nothing super complicated. It's just like a list, pretty much. But they're stored by column. And so adding one is easy. Adding new rows means you've got to add new stuff to each column in there. And uh, it's just kind of harder to do. But we can still do it. All right, what are we wanting to do? We're going to look at our data frame. And uh, when everything is all in one, oops, when everything is all in one line like this, it can be confusing to actually know what's going on. 
So we just need to unpack it. We're going to look at our data frame. And where are we going to look in our data frame? Well, we're going to look at location E. If you run it again, we'll add a second new two. Um, I don't know, let's find out. Nope. And the reason being is that for data frames, you know how we want to index and get like the first and second row or whatever? Well, here we can index directly into whatever the name of our, our column is. We can actually do the same thing for the row, which is what we're doing down here. Um, I believe you can either you, you can use both. So I can get the first column at position zero, or I can say column W. And that's the reason it makes a new one, by the way, is because, so let's say I take an existing column and I'm going to make the data this. All right, fine. That's really what this command is, is saying to do. Well, if I, if I say take the existing column new three, it's going to say, well, there isn't an existing column new three. You must mean you want me to add one. So that's what it does. But good question. Um, here, we're wanting to add uh, a row. So we're going to look for the, uh, the E row. And what are we going to do? We're going to be renaming it. And then we have to concatenate the new row. This is what the, we stored it into. And concatenate that onto our table. Now, as you can see, it took the E row and added it on at the end. This is not as simple or easy to remember as making a new column. So every time I want to make a new row in, in Pandas, I kind of just Google it and you get this. Just know that you can do it. Removing rows and columns is uh, about as simple as you would think. If we want to remove a column, well, we use the drop. Which one are we wanting to get rid of? We want to get rid of the, the one called new. Um, these arguments are what you would think they are. Uh, the axis tells you I'm wanting to go by column. And in place, what does in place mean? Well, you may have seen this um, anytime you're messing around with like spreadsheets. In place means I want to do it in place. I don't want to make any new things. I just want to take the, the existing um, table and drop my column rather than making a new one. All right, let's take a look. So we got rid of our new column. I could get rid of new two if I want and new three, just like that. Um, if you want to remove a row, you can. Works good, but I'll take that to mean that the syllabus links are now nice and and and, and pretty. So we'll go check that here in a bit. <laughs> um, if you want to remove a row, you can. Generally, not the best. Um, well, it's just kind of a pain. Kind of like um, adding a row. If I want to remove one, essentially what I'm doing is I'm making this is something that's not in place. We're making a new table out of the old one. And what are we going to, you notice the double brackets here? This is telling us we're looking at rows A, B, D, E, and X. Notice that C is not in there. So I'm making a new table out of my table from locations A, B, D, E, and X, everything except C. And as you can see, no pun intended, row C is gone. Um, now, I might remember a neat trick. No, it's not spinning. And I, I, I'm realizing that uh, we're getting to the point where people aren't going to get my lame Star Wars jokes anymore. Uh, but let's try. Let's say I wanted to remove uh, a row or add a row. Um, so we can do pandas transpose data frame. Let's see if there's an easy way to do that. It seems that there is an actual transpose function. Let's try it. OK, what does a transpose do? Well, in linear algebra, which, by the way, for the rest of the course, linear algebra is going to be your friend. Um, so we got our table, right? New table. 
That's what it looks like. Well, I suppose. Um, flip table, isn't there? Okay. And uh, let's take a look at flipped table. Okay, look at that. Um, the transpose in linear algebra is taking it. It's pretty much what you think when you see, see the word flip. If you had a element at position x comma y, it is now at y comma x. Um, why did I bother doing this? Well, remember how I said messing with columns is a pain in the butt, or I'm sorry, messing with rows is a pain in the butt. Well, now the rows are columns. So if you ever would like to mess with rows and you don't want to do all the cobbledygook that I mentioned up before, you can always flip it, do the operations as column operations, and then flip it back. How would I know that you can flip it back? Well, let's try transposing it and see what it looks like. And typing transpose is kind of a tongue twister for me. OK, so flipped table is the transpose of new table. Duh. Well, if I flip the flip, it should be back to normal. And lo and behold, it's back to normal. Your mileage may vary. OK, any questions before we move along? This um, It's the same style of lab as Monday, but it's not as, uh, not as dense, let's say. Um, questions along the lines of confusion, or if there's new stuff you want me to try? Um, kind of like uh, Reed's question, that was good. I think I was hearing my own echo, which is weird. OK, well, don't everybody speak up at once. Uh, let's move on. OK, so as I've already mentioned, uh, you can index by the actual name of what you're looking at, which turns out to be very helpful. Uh, and that's what we're going to look at how you can actually index on anything. So I got my table, and I've got a column called uh, funny, I actually have, a, I, I'm now realizing that we have a row and a column by x. But that's uh, actually a good thing, because it'll show us that uh, accessing columns is slightly different than accessing rows. Uh, I want to access the x column. Well, we can do that. You just use the uh, syntax you would expect for uh, indexing into a list. But instead of having a number in here, we just have the name of the column. Okay, so if I want the x column, it's pretty simple. There it is. Not only does it give it to us, it gives us the type of what's inside of it. Now, I, do, I believe not everything has to be the same type, and it'll list them out. But um, it does look kind of weird that we have an x inside of here. It's because we have an x row and an x column. Um, we can get multiple rows. I'm sorry, columns. Like this. We can get the rows by using the location indexer. So now I have row W, X, Y, and Z at the E spot. Um, I can do more than just the E spot. I can get the E, X, and B. Or if I really want to get crazy, I can get uh, a slice, we'll call it, of my table. So this is saying I want the data from the uh, B, E, and D rows and the X and Y columns. And there we have it. What would I need to put in? To get, so here's my table. I'll bring it up so it's easy to see. What would I need to put in 
to get the uh, chunk of data found here. I just want those. So how do I get that? Is there a way to exclude a row or a column from being shown? Uh, yeah. If uh, there's a super simple one to do it, I'm not sure of it, but here's how we can get around it. Kind of like I did the transpose trick. What I'm gonna do here is say we want, okay, so the Blackboard links are now working. Instructor notes are next. Um, and remember to change your content to 11 when you turn it in. So there's no lab 10. That was kind of the, we switched from a Tuesday, Thursday schedule to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and that kind of just gunked things up. Um, okay, so the question was, what if I specifically don't want a column or a row? <laughs> well, here's what I can do. Having not a column is the same as having uh, every other column. So we're going to have E, X, and B here. So what I'm going to say instead is uh, I want everything except the X column. So I'm going to say A. And B is already in there. And I'll replace this with D. Now they're going to be in some wonky order. It's just because I put them that way. But there we go. But um, yes, yeah, thank you, Parth. I was just about to return to that. And you were kind enough to put it in the chat box. Yes, that's how we get the subsection I was talking about. I'm saying I want to look at these rows and I want to look at these columns. It's pretty simple. OK, um, more than that, what we can do is select based on what is in the uh, the data itself, rather than just the, having to remember the names of the uh, rows and the columns. So can someone tell me what kind of data structure I have highlighted? What What is that? Something we've gone over. Um, can you do it without having to type out the other? I don't know. I would say make a new table, remove that column, and then print out the table. So yesterday, <clears throat> in my office hours, like you know, I had multiple students, and I'm not surprised by this. This, this happens every every year, um, and it's going to keep happening uh, for a very long time because I don't believe that you know high school, middle school uh, trains you to think this way. But while we were discussing some questions, and yes, Jackson did give the correct answer. Uh, while we were discussing some issues that people were having in homework, I kept trying to, the general problem is that people were getting way too far ahead without even knowing what step one was. So I would slow down and try to ask them, okay, what kind of thing is this function expecting? And people were getting very lost. The reason I'm going off on this tangent is you need to slow down and be able to know what kind of thing different parts of code are expecting. And if you hand it something that it's not going to expect, don't be surprised if it doesn't work. So what kind of thing is this? Well, that's a string. How do I know it's a string? Well, it is a scalar data type, and there's only a couple of those. It's surrounded with quotes. So it's got to be a string. What's this? It's an integer. How do I know? Same reason, except there are no quotes and there's no dot. What's this? Well, there is a list. And the question I asked is, what was this? 
Well, these curly braces tell me it is a dictionary. So we can make a data frame out of handing it a dictionary. One sec, dog wants to go out. If I don't let her out, she'll protest more and more. Okay, so let's hand it a dictionary. There we go. What does the data frame we get look like? Yeah, it looks like this. Doesn't have, uh, it's got the um, call one, call two, call three uh, from the keys. And it has the uh, rows as the values. Now I could flip it around if I want doing the transpose, but that would mean the columns were the rows and that would be silly. Okay, now what we're in this section about is conditional selection. What is conditional selection? Well, um, what we're wanting out of here is to eventually get Apple. That's what we're wanting. That's the answer to what we're gonna get. But I may not know that Apple is the answer. I may know that the thing I'm looking for has a number 555. And it's in the column two part of the uh, dictionary. So instead of having to look that up and then find in the table where that is, I can say, I want out of my data frame, the part that's in column three. So that narrows it down to the names of the fruits. But I also know that it has a value of 555. I'm going to go ahead and change these names just because they're uh, they're uh, messing with my head. So I'm going to call this one uh, just the number. This one is the ID number, kind of like you have at a store. And this one is the name, name of the fruit. All right, so that's column one, and I don't think we messed with it. This is column two. And this is column three. Okay, so I'm going to make all that. It's just easier for my uh, brain to get it. So I want the name of the fruit that has ID number 555. And what is that? Uh, it's apple, apparently. What's the name of the fruit that has the minimum ID number? I don't know. Let's find out. Watermelon. What's the name of the fruit that has the maximum ID number? I don't know. Uh, looks like grape and jackfruit are tied. Anything else people want me to uh, try out? Is average ID number a thing? I don't know. Let's try it. I would guess that um, AVG would be the name. Uh, series object has no attribute average. Let's try average. Try mean. Let's try mean. That will also be a good one to try. There's one. Um, it does not appear to have one. Now, uh, let's go back to AVG. What the heck are we talking about with this series? I didn't put a series in anywhere. Well, if you remember to me talking about the rows and columns, I mentioned that the columns are stored as what is called a series. So that's what that's where this is coming from. So don't think that you've messed anything up. Uh, essentially, what this is saying is I'm trying to do a dot abg off of a series, and that it doesn't exist. But the mean does. And uh, So the reason it was blank is because I, I have this inside of um, this other thing. So instead of doing that, here's what we can do. I can say, I want the ID number. Well, let's just look at it and let's see what happens if I get the max. Gives me that. Spooky. I can get them in. And let's try the mean now. There we go. And so um, the reason when we tried it inside of the expression, and 
again, I'll this is this, this is a good chance to warn people about. Uh, so here's here's what we tried to do, and I got something kind of unexpected, right? Well, I didn't mess up. Um, this is something I've, I've said many times, jokingly, but it's it's true. It's the reason it's funny. Computers are very stupid. They're just very, very, very fast. So everything I put in here is totally valid. It just so happens that it, since it's all on one line, it's kind of hard to read what we're actually looking for. What I'm saying is I want from my data frame in the ID number column, the name of whatever has ID number of the mean. And what's the mean? It's 416.25. Well, there isn't a 416.25. I can fix that. I think it's a float, so it might not like it. Let's see, 416.25. Need to add one of these. And we need to add, someone give me a fruit. Kiwi, hey, you know, that was quick. Kiki, no Kiki. All right, so now we have that. And uh, I think I may have messed up the, <laughs> I think by me putting in another number. Oh, well, it seems like it's okay. There we go. Of course, I wouldn't have messed up the mean. Where's my math? But the, it actually works just fine. It just so happened that we didn't have anything by that number before. Uh, let's see. So when you did the mean, would you change it from name to num? Would it get a value? Um, maybe. Let's find out. Uh, yes, it would, actually. Um, what do you think it'll give me? So this is what the, uh, <laughs> it actually gave me both, but um, this is the piece of data it gave me back. Now it's given me this. So th the piece of data I was interested in was here. So row eight and the data from name. Now it's still row eight, but it's the data from num. Yeah, data frames are nice because you can put in uh, column names instead of having to remember hmm, the name of the fruit is column three and I have to take one off because we count from zero. It's designed to be user-friendly. Well, more user-friendly, let's put it that way. Okay, that's enough tinkering around with conditions. Let's look at descriptor functions. Um, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, this was a question in the homework, either this one or a later one. Remember this. Now, why do you have to remember it? Well, uh, that's not the best question. How is, uh, what's the best method to remember this? One, you could just remember it. Or two, when you uh, just look at the name, what does descriptor mean? It's stuff that kind of describes our data frame in this case. How would I go about describing? If you, if, if you were to ask me, what are some properties of our data frame? Probably tell you maybe the shape of it, kind of like a matrix, three by four. Um, the average of some of the stuff inside, those are descriptors. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Uh, we've switched everything back to call one, call two, call three, because I don't want to mess anything up. Uh, the head function will give you the first five rows. Why is that nice? Well, you could have a data frame filled with thousands and thousands of stuff. And you want to be able to see what it looks like, but you don't want to have your entire screen filled up. Let's see if tail is something. That gives us what I'm assuming, the last five rows. Head and tail are generally the... How do I explain head and tail without using a coin of head and tail? They go together. Let's put it that way. Info gives us um, some information duh, about what's the types of what's going on in here. So data types, we've got int64, meaning integer. That's all you really need to know about that. Um, if you had a float in here, this number, this would be changed. How many int64? Data types are there? There's two. Uh, there's the column one and column two. And what's the last one? 
object. Why does it call it object? Because it's not entirely sure that these are strings. Object is the default of, I don't know what it is, but it's at least an object. Can't get much more specific than that. Uh, we got the describe. This one's nicer to look at. Um, what does this give us? Well, it gives us a whole bunch of nice um, descriptors. We have the count of how many are in column one, column two. We got the mean, the standard deviation, minimum, and these are called what quartiles will definitely be. This will be your friend later, very much so. Spooky. Uh, we have counting in some methods. Why do I say counting plural? Because um, there, the field of counting is is a is a vast one. It's more than just going one, two, three, four, five. Believe it or not, we can get the sum of a column if you can actually sum it. Let's see what happens if you try to sum. I think column three. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose I should have expected that. Uh, but yeah, you get the sum of the uh, data in a column if they can be summed. And if it is just a object, this is what happens. We can get the unique elements out of a column. I can do the same thing with column three, and this should be nicer. I can get the number of unique elements. I can get the counts of each element. So I believe we've got some duplicates in it. Uh, Yeah, 222 appears twice. So we can see that these are the corresponding counts of these values that show up. But I can do the same thing. Is there a group for this class? Uh, I don't know. Students sometimes set one up. Uh, yeah, I can do the same thing for column three if I want, or column one. What else can we do? Well, before I move on to doing the functions, are there any questions other than the group me one? Descriptors, they describe stuff. OK, well, do you remember, I think two labs ago, we talked about what if I want to put a function, or what if I want to add two lists together? Well, lists don't have add. They just concatenate in Python. But in NumPy, it actually did what we wanted it to do. It added the elements in list one to the elements in list two. Well, you can do the same thing here. We have what is called the apply function. And what the apply function does is it takes an actual function as an argument. Now, um, knowing how to pass functions around in general, not something I expect you to know how to do. Just know that if I would like to do multiply by two to an entire data frame, I can do that by using the apply. So let's do it. All right, so I've got my column two, which has a whole bunch of fruit ID numbers. And what I would like to do is apply the times two function to everything in there. Okay, so I do that, 444 times two, 888 so on and so forth. And I can do this with any function I wish. Um, let's say pluralize is a function. It takes a string. What does this string do? It returns the string. Returns. How complex can you get with that? I can get as complex as I wish. And it puts an S on the end. That's all it does. And now I'm going to apply this to column three. So now I have oranges and grapes and mangoes, so on and so forth. Uh, so you asked how complex can you get with it? Uh, simply think of it this way. If there's any kind of function I want to work on an individual column on, it'll work. You just kind of have to make sure that your function is expecting the right kind of thing. So does that replace the values in the database or just display the values times two? Um, 
the way it works is this thing I have here is some data, but I'm not storing it anywhere. Transformed data. Now I am. So I'm going to print my data frame back out and see if it's changed. And then I'm going to print my transformed data. I should have changed. We need a better name. It's too long. TF data. TF data. OK. So uh, here's my original data frame. And here's my transformed data. If you think back to, um, was it Monday? Pretty sure it was Monday. It makes a deep copy before it messes with anything. And then once I mess with my deep copy, it doesn't mess with the original. OK. So using the symbolic apply, um, very, very useful. If you want to do a thing to an entire part of the data frame, this is how you do it. What else can we do? Well, it sure would be nice if I could click and sort this stuff. Turns out you actually can. So I'm going to sort column two by ascending. Or if I want, I can sort it by descending. Or if I want, I could sort column three. Pretty simple. Sort values function. All right, let's try an example if we have time. Uh, well, let's let's skip the exercise so I can actually get get to these. All right. So aggregating, you're going to hear this word a lot. Uh, you can think of it as grouping. They are subtly different, but for most intents and purposes, it'll be fine. So let's say I want to group by a particular property. We can do that. Let's make a new data frame. Looks like this. It's got the key, and it's got data one, two, and three. All right. And what I want to do here is I would like to group up and sum values in all the columns based on my key. What does that mean? Well, I want all the keys of A, all the keys of B, and all the keys of C. I want them grouped up, and then I want to add the data, that the corresponding data. We can do that. So A, what's it got? Well, it's got a 1 and a 4 in data 1. It's got a 10 and a 13. Um, I believe. If it's not this, then no. OK, so instead of, I was just trying to show that you can do this with any uh, function you can think of. If I take this off, what's it going to give me? Something weird. We had sum to start with, meaning I want to add everything up. I'm going to replace that with prod for product, meaning I'm multiplying everything. So key A has data 1 and 4 in data 1. Multiply them together, I get 4. I get 10 and 13 in data 2. Multiply together, I get 130. Sum was the original one. I was just trying to show you can do more stuff. You can get more specific if you want. I can say I want to sum up everything, but I only want to do um, data 1 and data 2. I don't want to sum up. Uh, let me say that again. I want to group up everything by keys, but I only want to sum up data one and data two. We can do that. I can make this do data one and data three. Anything I want. So that's aggregate. You can do a lot of stuff with aggregate. Um, we can also filter. What would you think filtering means? Well, you got to filter. Stuff goes into it. It catches some things and lets others fly right through. In this example, we've got a data frame. Imagine that. And what I would like to do is say, if I've got a not a number in my row, I don't want it. Why would I not want to? So someone said multiply and divide. Uh, product is multiply. I, did, I tried that one. I don't know if this exists. It doesn't seem to. Uh, but I can make a function that did it. But as for right now, those are the only ones I know off the top of my head. Uh, why do I not want not a number? Well, because it's like uh, it's like trying to divide by 0. Sometimes this will just say not a number because it's not defined. 
division is not defined when the, the denominator is zero. So that's kind of like what we see here. It shouldn't be there. Meaning that this row in our particular example it has an invalid part. So we want to get rid of them. So let us say our drop data frame is drop all the uh, not a numbers. OK, they're gone. I could instead say, instead of dropping them, replace them with a 0 and do that too. Or if I want, instead of making them a 0, I can just say, get the mean of everything else and use that instead. Whatever number I put here is going to be what I replace it with. So the mean appears to be uh, 407. And so 407 replaces all the not a numbers. We can uh, do the same thing with, uh, and this is the last part, so we'll actually do it. Uh, how would I do replacing the not a numbers with the string missing? Anybody have an idea? put missing in, uh, in the fill. Let's try it. Uh, I would make a joke, James, but uh, uh, let's just say that comment will replace the joke. Um, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, like this, sort of. All right. so. Very good. Whatever goes inside the parentheses is what you're replacing stuff with. Uh, I'm going to say this is df3, just because I can. And we'll print it out. Look at that. Uh, James, you uh, mentioned the strip function. And I can see why you would think that. But you need to understand that the strip function, this is, goes back to types. The strip function works on strings. And we're not dealing with strings. We're dealing with a row. And what is this row a part of? It's part of a data frame. And what's the data frame equivalent? It's this. But I mean, this is a good, good attempt. Okie dokie then. That's our time. Ooh, any questions, comments, concerns, or lame jokes? I like lame jokes. Is the homework under take home 10 or 11? Well, I would wager, I'll check the actual link itself. Syllabus has it on 10. Let's look at that homework and make sure it's about pandas. Looks to be about pandas. So I would take that as a safe assumption. I'll open up the 11 one just to see. Uh, it appears the link has been fixed, so. Uh, so Dr. Cleveland just said the BB links are correct. So there is your thing to check. Okie doke, any other questions? Happy to try to answer. Oh, there's only four of us, it appears. No one has any questions. I'm okay with that. I will see you guys on Friday.